Welcome to the video. Now, there has been a new release or a new update of a tool within Lightroom. It's a pretty chunky update. And to be honest, in my opinion, it is quite the game changer because this is something that I would have had to jump over into Photoshop to do, which I didn't like doing because it interrupts my workflow and I'm not, I'm not a massive uh, expert in Photoshop. To be honest, I like to keep things simple and I've never quite got my head around it. But anyway, it is now in Lightroom. What I'm talking about is the generative AI remover tool. Now, love or hate a bit of AI, this is next level. I've been super impressed with how it's worked. There has been a tool for quite a while within Lightroom where you can remove things and take out distractions. It's not brilliant. It's okay if it's fairly simple, it got the job done. But this I stumbled across as an early access release and I have been impressed. So I thought I'd come on and just share it with you. You might find it useful as well. So without further ado, let's get into it and I will show you how it works. So a couple of things to start with. This is an early access release, but I'm pretty sure if you're updated onto the latest edition of Lightroom, you can use it. It is currently only available within the cloud services, so you can't use it offline. You can still use the uh, non-AI version offline, but if you want the full bells and whistles, you do need to be online. So let me take you over to my MacBook and I'll show you just how wicked it really is. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. I've brought up this image of our lovely family dog, Wilma. She's super cute. I took this really nice shot of her and it's, otherwise it's quite clean with the exception of this tree stump that I'm not a particular fan of in the background. So firstly, what I would do is zoom in on it just so that you can get a nice accurate selection of it. It's already blurry because I've shot wide open on Wilma's face, but it's still a bit of a distraction in my opinion. So come over to the right hand side in the toolbar here and you will see this little eraser tool. If you hit the eraser tool, you then need to come in and make sure that you have generative AI ticked on. So you can tick it on, you can tick it off. So I would tick it on. You can also use this object aware tool for your selection, which is actually quite useful as well. And it does a nice job. If you basically paint over an area, it will try and automatically pick out the edges of it. But for this, it's quite a simple job. So I'm going to leave it off. You just want to make sure you've got a big enough brush that you can select the whole area and not miss any of the edges. Also make sure if there is a reflection of the thing that you want to remove, make sure you select that as well. So I've just maybe increase that just a little bit to make sure I get everything. And I'm literally going to drag over and paint over that tree stump and then let go. It has then shown me which area has been selected in red, which is really nice. You can add and subtract to it using these tools at the top if you miss anything. Or of course, in a simple one like this, I might just go back and start again. And quite simply, you can then hit apply and then the magic starts to happen and we will see what kind of result we get with the AI. It does take a little bit longer, but I think it's well worth the wait. And as I mentioned, you do need to be online for this to work. And we'll just jump back over into my screen and we can have a little look and see what kind of a job it has done. Hopefully a good one in this instance. We're nearly there. And there you go. It has been done. What you can do is you can skip between three different variations that it gives you to start with. So you can go one, two, three. I think I think number two was pretty good. It's really added in those slats of the wood. And that's quite impressive, actually. And it's actually quite an improvement on one and certainly didn't like number three. But I do like number two. You can also hit refresh if you're not happy with the options it's given you and it will generate a whole load of other ones. You can also um, start refining your selection at this point as well. But to be honest with you, I think the job is done for me there. So I'll press return um, and I will now zoom back out um, and you will see that the image is pretty tidy. I mean, that is pretty impressive. Just for one drag, one hit, you would never know that there was a tree on there, in my opinion. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. Obviously, uh, you can go a little bit more complex on your selections. I will just quickly show you another one I did. Um, this is a cool uh, Mercedes G-Wagon that I took a photo of a couple of weeks back in, in London. And it did have a lot of um, kind of mess around it. And I wanted to get rid of some of the signs that were behind it. So let me show you a little before and after. So you will see that I've already applied my uh, generative uh, AI 
fill to this. And if I hit my little eyedropper, you'll see that I've got uh, various signs behind it. And I think that really cleans up the image. And if I zoom in over here to this area where there was a sign there, I think it's done a really nice job of it. I mean, there's an edge on that anyway, because there's a slightly damper patch. I could probably adjust that if I wanted, but you will see that there was two signs there and they have just disappeared. Really useful. I am a big believer of keeping your images as tidy and as clean as possible. And this really helps you do that. This works on mobile, iPad and on the desktop app. And I think it is a bit of a game changer, as I said at the beginning, because you don't have to go into Photoshop and start fiddling about with another app. So give it a whirl. Let me know what you think of it. Have you used it? Have you not? Uh, are you a fan? Drop the comments down below. Perhaps there is some good use for AI within photography. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.